hum most of the time. It was a warm, sunny morning. In his small house at the other side of the wood, Mr. Tickle was asleep. You didn't know that there was such a thing as a tickle, did you? Oh, <laughs> well, there is. Tickles are small and round, and they have arms that stretch and stretch and stretch. Extraordinarily long arms. Mr. Tickle was fast asleep. He was having a dream. It must have been a very funny dream, because it made him laugh out loud. And that woke him up. He sat up in bed, stretched his extraordinarily long arms, and yawned an enormous yawn. Mr. Tickle felt hungry, so do you know what he did? He reached out one of his extraordinarily long arms, opened the bedroom door, reached down the stairs, opened the kitchen door, reached into the kitchen cupboard, opened the biscuit tin, took out a biscuit, brought it back upstairs, and back to Mr. Tickle. As you can see, it's very useful indeed, having arms as long as Mr. Tickle's. Mr. Tickle munched his biscuit. He looked out of the window. Today looks very much like a tickling day, he thought to himself. So, later that morning, after Mr. Tickle had made his bed and cooked his breakfast, he set off through the wood. As he walked along, he kept his eyes very wide open, looking for somebody to tickle, looking for anybody to tickle. Eventually, Mr. Tickle came to a school. There was nobody about, so, reaching up his extraordinarily long arms to a high window ledge, Mr. Tickle pulled himself up and peeked in through the open window. Inside, he could see a classroom. There were children sitting at their desks and a teacher writing on the blackboard. Mr. Tickle reached in through the window with that extraordinarily long arm of his, went up behind a little boy called Peter and tickled him on the back of his neck. P Peter giggled out loud. Stop that giggling at once, said the teacher sternly. Mr. Tickle waited a minute, then reached in through the window again. Mr. Tickle's extraordinarily long arm went right up to the teacher, paused, and then tickled. The teacher jumped in the air and turned round very quickly to see who was there. But there was nobody there. Mr. Tickle grinned, a mischievous grin. He waited another minute and then tickled the teacher again. This time he kept on tickling. Until soon the teacher was laughing out loud and saying, Oh, stop it! Stop it over and stop it over and over and over again. All the children were laughing too at such a funny sight. There was a terrible pandemonium. Eventually, Mr. Tickle thought he'd had enough fun. So he gave the teacher one more tickle for luck, and then very quietly brought his arm back through the open window. Chuckling to himself, he jumped down from the window, leaving the poor teacher to explain what it was all about, which of course he couldn't. Then Mr. Tickle went to town. And what a day Mr. Tickle had. on traffic duty at the crossroads in the middle of the town. It caused an enormous traffic jam.
little the greengrocer, just as he was piling apples neatly in his shop window. The greengrocer fell over backwards. And the apples rolled all over the shop. There were apples everywhere. At the railway station, the guard was about to wave his flag for the train to leave. As he lifted his arm in the air, Mr. Tickle tickled him. And every time he tried to wave his flag, Mr. Tickle tickled him. And tickled him again. Until the train was ten minutes late, and all the passengers were absolutely furious. That day, Mr. Tickle tickled everybody. He tickled the doctor. He tickled the butcher. He even tickled old Mr. Stamp, the postman. Dropped all his letters into a puddle. Then Mr. Tickle went home. Sitting in his armchair in his small house at the other side of the wood, he laughed and laughed and laughed every time he thought about all the people he'd tickled. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Thank you.